to my YouTube channel, Love for Intuitive Astrology. So today I will talk about the upcoming year of 2025 for the sign of Sagittarius. So this video is for everyone who has their sun, their moon and their rising sign or their rising sign in Sagittarius. And most accurate, I would say, is Sagittarius rising and sun sign Sagittarius. And in this video, we're going through all the planets. So the shifting planets in which house they're going to be for you. And also we're going to look at the best months for money, for traveling. So it's going to be exciting. And let's just start and have a look at your yearly overview of 2025. So at the beginning of the year, we're starting right up the batch with Mars retrograde. And it will start in the sign of Leo, move through the sign of Cancer, and it will station direct on the 23rd of February, 2025. Now for you, we have Leo in the ninth house and we have Cancer in your eighth house. And when we look at Mars, this is a very masculine, action-oriented planet and when this is retrograde there are going to be a little bit of frustrations so when it's in the ninth house this is really related to travel so this is what you're going to feel in the month of january that if you're going to travel there might be some tiny hiccups irritations or changes that will bring up some impatience or anger then in the month of February, there's more focus on anger and frustrations regarding your cycles. So this anger mm -hmm. is very much key for you to break certain patterns and certain cycles, okay? And now Scorpio is also ruled by Mars and the eighth house is ruled by Scorpio. So... It could also have to do with sexuality and maybe some anger towards your own boundaries, okay? And what it is that you actually want from relationships. So this is a, this very much has a focus as well at the beginning of the year, okay? Um, then we have Mars Direct on the 23rd or Stationing Direct. And then we have Venus retrograde on the 1st of March, okay? It's not all going to be negative. I promise you there is a lot of good news as well. And you got to stay tuned for that because I'm going to explain that to you as well. But I'm going to have to give you a realistic overview of the whole year. So Venus is going to station retrograde on the 1st of March uh, in the sign of Aries. And Aries and Pisces are going to be big signs this year in the sense of this, um, these signs are going to have a lot of energy. And since we all have the different zodiac signs in our chart, we're going to discuss that. So Venus is going to station retrograde in your fifth house in Aries. And it's going to move to back to the sign of Pisces up until the 12th of April. So there's a lot of subjects regarding love, okay? So you're going to close down maybe um, some past loves or um, some. you're going to cut some course with past lovers or you're going to break certain cycles when it comes to past love. So someone might contact you and you're like, you know what, I'm over it, this is it, I'm focusing on my hobbies now because the fifth house is also creativity and you might be picking up an old hobby, something that you used to do before and maybe you were too busy to really pick that up. And what it's funny because the fifth house is related to hobbies, but also to children and your inner child. And don't they say that the best talents you have you used to do in your childhood used to be your childhood dream so a lot of times when we go back to our childhood we can really realize what your talents are and you don't always have to make a talent your job right sometimes your talent or your hobby can be something that you're just doing for yourself so yeah you're going to explore a lot into that and maybe you might be feeling a bit insecure like 
I might not have time for it, but actually your pain can be transmitted and transmuted into your hobbies. At the same time, you know, the fourth house, when Venus is going retrograde in the fourth house, it might be bringing up some family issues or some things that make you uncomfortable in the family or some past patterns that you are now ready to break. Because not only do we have Venus there, we also have Saturn in the fourth house up until the... Um, up until the 25th of May and it will stay in uh, the fourth house up until the 25th sorry and will go into the sign of Aries which is your fifth house so there will be a lot of focus on the fourth and fifth house and lessons regarding that okay so on the 25th Saturn is moving into the sign of Aries which is related to your children again and you might sometimes feel like you're going to have a creative block or that you're going to have a bit more difficult time with your kids. And a lot of it has to do also with healing your own inner child. Okay, so that will have a lot of emphasis. And if you feel that maybe there is a lack of expression or you felt like maybe when you were younger, you were not able to express yourself fully, these old lessons or old pains might be coming up and you have a huge opportunity to heal that. Neptune is going to be moving in the sign of Aries as well on the 30th of May and it's going to be in a conjunction with Saturn. And these two planets are going to dance around each other for basically the whole year, okay? And when we look at Neptune, this is actually a very creative planet. So when this is moving in the fifth house, it's going to help Saturn there, right? It's going to ground it. Like I have all these ideas, but I actually got to make a plan. I'm going to make a plan to make it happen. So it's quite positive. And I feel that it's going to help you with your spirituality and actually also ground your spirituality. Because if you're just up in the air, you cannot get anything done. So you need all of, you know, the, the chakras below, the chakras below and the chakras up, need to work together in order to make things happen so there will be an alignment happening from the 29th of January the north node is gonna be in your fourth house so some of you are moving okay maybe you're letting go of a job and you're like you know what I'm letting go of this job because the south node is in the 10th house I'm gonna move to a different place I'm gonna move somewhere else and it might be a little bit of time before you really settle in, but uh, this will go away when Saturn is going to move in Aries. And in 2026, in February, Aries, Saturn will stay in Aries, okay? And that will be gone. So the difficulty will be over. So make sure to read the contract and that everything is in order. Okay, and it might cause some delays before you can actually move in, at least at the beginning of the year. Okay, um, Jupiter. Mm. Jupiter is going to be in your seventh house, such, such, and you could be attracting someone major. So up until the 9th of June, you are in a love cycle. And when Saturn is also moving in the fifth house, you're not looking for, you know, flings. You're looking for something serious. And this is funny because, you know, you are a sign that's pretty open-minded and you're pretty up for adventure. But some of you are tired and you're like, you know what? I'm, I want to have adventures with someone else. I want to be uh, in a relationship. So if you're single, there is a massive opportunity for you to meet someone. And some of you are going to get married this year, okay? And after the 9th of June, Jupiter will move in the 8th house. And this is very much about finances. And they could increase as well because you are going to get married or have a joint bank account. Could also be that you're joining forces with someone else when it comes to business this year, okay? Could be with your partner 
or this could be with uh, someone that you are collaborating with. So money could be increasing, especially after June. And this could be true also in inheritance or an investment, or you could find an investor that wants to invest in your business or in something like a, a property, for example, or in a house. And Jupiter is exalted in Cancer, okay? So Jupiter loves to be in Cancer. So this is really good news. And you could really get lucky when it comes to receiving more money. And it could be coming from different sources, even very unexpected sources. So just be very open to that. Uh, it's definitely a love year for you, okay? So focusing on love. And there's just one thing because sometimes people get so disappointed when they don't meet anyone uh, in a year where Jupiter is in the seventh house or in the fifth house, right? And sometimes we still have some work to do right? Sometimes we still have some work to do. The person that is right for you could be right next to you, but if you're not ready, you're not able to see them. And this has to do with self-love, okay? With how, yeah, how you love yourself. So you can look into your childhood, into your past to really resolve that. And I'm talking from experience, right? I was someone that was always attracting the wrong people, and I didn't really realize why, but actually the people that were really amazing, I didn't see them because I didn't love myself. So then you reflect to other people what you think you deserve. And I thought I didn't deserve the best. So I didn't attract the best because I didn't let the best in for myself, okay? So this is deep stuff, but I want you to know that ultimately, the timing has to be right for you to be also in the right place to accept um, the right love for you. And there, you have to have the right attitude for that. So a lot of focus on uh, creativity, on love. And Uranus is also moving in the 7th house between the 7th of July and uh, the 8th of November. And this is really bringing some unexpected situations in your love life. So you could be attracting someone that's more out of the box, okay? You might want to have a bit more freedom, like suggesting more freedom in your relationships, uh, or you attract someone that's just not what people expect for you. You know, I had someone like that for you in mind, but it became that, okay? Or you could have like a wedding that's completely different, you know, you could marry in a different color or just doing something that's going to shock other people, right? Like not everybody wants to get married. You could be like, you know, I don't want to get married. I want to just be with my soulmate. I want to be with someone that is really sharing the same interest with me. And I don't want to have this typical relationship. So there's nothing wrong with that. You explore what your soul wants to explore, okay? Um, da -tum, da -tum. So just one thing, July, we have the South Node in Virgo in a conjunction with Mars. So I just want you to be careful with work, okay? Because you might be a bit frustrated. It might be more difficult. And some of you are definitely switching work this year, okay? You're going to switch to something else. Could be that you're going to start working from home or you're going to, you know, let go of old patterns in the job and go for something that is more closer to your soul, okay? So for you, travel months, February, March, August, September. Then we have health months, okay? April and May. Money months for my Sag, uh, January and December. Love months, well, from January up till June are all love months for you. Then we have career months. Uh, we have April, May, August and September. And Mm, months to move are February and March. Keep in mind that you still have Saturn there, but there's going to be a lot of emphasis in 
March and February on Pisces. So some of you are going to move. It's going to be uh, maybe not as fast as you would like to, but it could be uh, a shift that is destined for you to happen. So a lot of changes for you. Get ready, okay? So a lot of shifts, shifts going to happen also on a global level. There will be a lot that are going to come to the surface. Uh, Pluto is now in your third house. It's gonna stay there for quite some time. And I love this placement. You're gonna do a lot of research into different subjects. So follow your obsession in the sense of knowledge. What do you want to soak up? What are you addicted to? You're gonna be an expert because Pluto can make you an expert and it's kind of going into extremes. That's why it's gonna be like an obsession for learning but at the same time, it's going to make you an expert. So make sure that you need to let go sometimes and focus on the people around you and other things. But on the positive side, this, this can really create someone very knowledgeable. And, uh, you know, there could be some transformation with your siblings. So it could be some extremes, no contact, a lot of contact, and you're finding your midway in between of that, okay? Anyways, that's that's my year overview for you, my amazing Sag. Let me know in the comments, what is your plan for 2025? I would love to know. And before you go, if you're interested in an astrology retreat, I'm doing intuitive or meditation and astrology retreats. I'm combining astrology, so I'm doing several workshops with meditation and we're going to remove karmic blocks and we're going to intertwine astrology with uh, meditation and manifestation. So if you would be interested in that, look at the website that is pointed below uh, in the description box. I'm wishing you the best year ever, my lovely Sag. Take this opportunity for growth. Love, love, love yourself and all around you. Happy 2025 and bless you.